الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين so for those who are here, inshallah, uh, we're going to have a Sunday night series, inshallah. As much as Allah gives us tawfiq after Isha now in the winter since it's early. And then we'll see, you know, inshallah, after Ramadan as the days get longer and the clock uh, goes forward an hour. So we might do it earlier depending on the time. So initially, this wasn't my topic for the whole uh, series. I wanted to pick a book that would help us, inshallah, improve our relationship with the Quran and learn about the Book of Allah. So before actually studying Tafsir, and I'm not qualified to teach Tafsir, but to know the principles of Tafsir and understand uh, what is what are the tools to access the Quran. Uh, so inshallah next week we'll begin that book uh, And tonight I wanted to address kind of a community issue So there are many people that I think would find this relevant and useful uh, They were either unaware if they're starting tonight on short notice Or they, um, you know, uh, for whatever reason were busy and couldn't make it So I wanted to address the issue of leadership in the message So this is not an issue that, you know, is exclusive to us, but my travels in many states and cities and you know, not just the US or Canada, but other non-Muslim countries where uh, the law of the land is not according to Islam, they have a different practice. Uh, this is common uh, conflicts in the masjid, um, discontent with whoever is in charge or people, yani for whatever reason, have their personal differences. So I don't want to focus on the problem too much. But just read what is the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, and his Sahaba and his scholars about this. So, first and foremost, I want to say that you know, in anything in life, you know, before a person gets into a position of leadership, there, there is a training process. Um, so, if anybody wants to get in a business, if they want to be a leader in any sort, be it socially, politically, economically, in healthcare, all these things have training, and the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also needs any training if a person wants to lead and be in charge. If they're elected, there's things there's shuru to consider, there's conditions to consider. So, I mean, in many cases, in my estimation, the, the way that leadership is chosen for. And people end up in, in a position, it may not necessarily be because they're the most qualified. But in a lot of cases, it's this is the lesser of two evils. So somebody wants to be in charge uh, because the other person they think will do a worse job. So I, I first want to establish yeah, I mean, we're not here for cancel culture. A lot of people, yeah, I mean, when they see there's something that is uh, incorrect, they want to just dismantle leadership altogether. In our religion, yeah, I mean, leadership is a, is a wajib, it's a communal obligation. I mean, Muslims should not be governing themselves you know, as, as a society. We're all responsible for individual action, but Islamically there is a need and a requirement for leadership. But what the issues I wanted to address or examples in the life of the Sahaba although that leadership is at a much larger scale be it Khalifa or governor but leadership is anybody under someone's control it applies and then also something that applies to everybody you know some people are very critical of the board very critical of leadership in many masajid but they themselves they're unaware of the role of their nafs their nafs plays a role that power, as we'll read, love of power and authority, that is something that scholars say is even more detrimental than love of money. As much humans love money, love of power is much more dangerous, right? Because when 
and you're number one, right? There's no higher way to go if you ever feel under your control. So that's just an uh, introduction, and here I'm not to pick any sides or call any names. There's a lot of the scenario I don't know about, but if this isn't addressed, I'm afraid we can lose the investment that was put into the house of Allah. So first of all, I'll just read the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it is reported by Imam Tirmidhi and also in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad. Um, and the collection of Imam al Nasa'i and Ibn Hibban. May Allah have mercy on all of them. In the hadith of Ka'b ibn Malik al Ansari, is related by Ka'b ibn Malik. May Allah be pleased with him. Um, this was the companion who, the famous story in Surah Al Tawbah, of the three companions who were senior. Uh, they, they participated in all the expeditions before Tabuk, and because it was difficult on their nafs, they could not go out with. The Prophet and they stayed home and Allah forgave them, He accepted their repentance. But He has the, the long hadith, you know, about that entire experience when He was you know, basically boycotting the Prophet order. Nobody can give salam to Him or talk to Him for 30 days, and then 10 days were added, even His wife was included. Sorry for 40 days, and then another 10 days were added, making it 50. So He reports that the Prophet said, Ma li that the close translation is that two hungry wolves, two hungry wolves that are left unwatched amongst a flock of sheep. You know how much wolves would go after sheep, even if the Shepherd is there, but these sh sheep have no shepherd to guard them, and two hungry wolves are let loose amongst them. That scenario is not as dangerous than the Then the person's love and greed for wealth and also popularity and fame in the religion. These two things, love of wealth and greed of wealth, and also the greed for power, position, authority in the religion are much more dangerous, the Prophet ﷺ said, than the two hungry wolves that loose among the, sh the sheep. So the, the risala or the explanation of this hadith that I'm looking at is from Imam Ibn Rajab al Hamid, may Allah have mercy, and was a great scholar of hadith and fiqh. Rahimahullah. And the one that applies to us when I explain the entire hadith or his explanation of the entire hadith. But he mentions that what is it that a person's greed for fame or notoriety means? So he says, as for the person's greed for, uh, for notoriety, this is more dangerous than his greed for wealth. Because seeking يعني, fame in the religion and to be elevated and given a high status amongst uh, an authority over the people and being exalted in the land is more harmful for a slave than seeking or being greedy of wealth and its harm is greater and to have zuhud يعني, to be a person that abstains from it is more difficult then abstaining from wealth. Because wealth, فَإِنَّ الْمَالَ يَبْذُلُ فِي طَلَبِ الرِّيَاسَةِ وَالشَّرَةِ That wealth leads one to seeking leadership and power, uh, and power and authority. وَالْحِرَسُ عَلَى الشَّرَفِ عَلَى قِسْمِهِ And then he explains there's two categories for having uh, greed for uh, being given power and leadership. So he says one of them, One is to seek a popularity and fame through wilayat, to have يعني, go uh, governance, والسلطان, and a sultan, والمال, and wealth. So that one necessarily doesn't apply. One that I saw that really struck me, and how can it apply to even 
the masjid situation is that the second category he says He says طلب الشرف والعلو على الناس بالأمور الدينية that seeking fame and popularity and a high status amongst people in matters of the religion كالعلم like for example knowledge والعمل والزهد and in worship and, uh, and asceticism فهذا أفحش من الأول وأقبح وأشد فسادا وخطرا says this is more heinous and gross than the first category and it is leads to more corruption and danger. He says because when a person is seeking through these means what is with or excuse me he says that فَإِنَّ الْعِلْمَ وَالْعَمْلُ وَالزُّهْدُ As for uh, knowledge and action and, and uh, scrupulousness, you know, somebody who prefers the akhirah to the dunya and not having much desire in this world, he says, through these they are sought that which is with Allah of high and lofty ranks and the perpetual bounties of Jannah and being near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and close to Him. So anyhow, that's just a category. So it's a lifelong journey and a, and a battle and a struggle for a person to discipline their nafs and their, they say, a translation of the nafs is soul, translation of ruh is spirit. Um, but it's a lifelong journey to struggle against those desires and to struggle against those uh, temptations. So. If a person just has that in mind and they're aware, يعني, there's a constant the, uh, regimen that they have that they're working and fighting against those demons. Okay, so that's for the Risala of Ma'ud Rajul Rahimahullah. And then Al Ghazali Rahimahullah, he mentions in the Hiyah Ulum Deen in his chapter of the. Um, like uh, basically the denouncement of ostentation showing off and love of reputation and status and these things. So he says, Rahimullah, the, the two have in his estimation and his ishtihad through human behavior that the the relationship between riya showing off and love of status, they have the similar root. And that is in the essence, people want to be seen. People want to be seen. So no matter what position we are in, be it a, a leader or a follower, يعني, Imam, Ma'mum, Amir, Ma'mur, there's always a struggle for a person to fight against these two blameworthy qualities. A person struggles with their intention their whole life. Imam Sufyan Thawri rahimahullah he said for 20 years يعني منذ 20 سنة ما ما عالجت شيئا مثل ما عالجت نيتي لأنها تتقلب علي he said for 20 years I never tried to treat something you know like it's a sickness or a problem like my intention because it keeps changing it keeps changing so anyway the chapter is long but Al Ghazali rahimahullah he mentions that what is it that is the difference between love of wealth and love of uh, power? So he first says, That he said, know that you know, power, authority, and wealth, they are the two pillars of يعني, the temptations of this world. That any person in their life, if they want to go far and they want to achieve something of this world, they, it revolves around those two things, wealth and power. So he says, as for wealth, it is the possession of physical or, or material assets and resources 
that can be benefited from. And the level and the the word jah he explains is that the person he doesn't control just wealth, you know, for, for resources, but he is the one that has the hearts of and minds of the people. That they see him as superior and they see him or her uh, as the ultimate. So that's his definition of it. But the part I wanted to read about is that he says um, the explanation of the denouncement uh, of the love of this word Jah, wanting the hearts and minds of the people to submit to that person. So he mentions the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Al Qasas. تِلْكَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ نَجْعَلُهَا لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُرِيدُونَ عُلُوًا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فَسَادًا وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah after he explained the story of Qarun and how he was humiliated through his wealth because he didn't attribute it to Allah and he didn't give zakah and he even did a greater, uh, such an evil thing, he tried to spread a false rumor that attacked the integrity of Karimullah Musa ibn Imran alayhi salam that he had, he accused of, you know, or he tried to instigate a, um, you know, scandal that Musa did something that is not behoving of a man who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a woman lied and, and she just got paid for it um, and then she confessed and said what had so anyway, after this humiliating end of Qarun, Allah He tells a lesson for all the Muslimin until the end of you know this world. He said that Dar al Akhirah, that eternal home of Al Jannah, we will reserve it for those who do not want to be exalted in this earth, nor do they want corruption in it. And Allah He says that the good ending is for those people of Taqwa. So Imam Ghazali, he says that in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined between the desire of corruption, fasad, and al-ulub, and having high status. وَبَيَّنَ أَنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لِلْخَالِ عَنِ الْإِرَادَتَيْنِ جَمِيعًا That the home of the hereafter in Jannah is for the one who does not possess any of these two. The next ayah he mentions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tuhud, Man kana yureed, no, excuse me, this is, uh, yes, Surah Tuhud, Man kana yureed al hayat al dunya wa zinataha nuwafi ilayhim a'mala hum fiha, wa hum fiha la yubakhasood. Ulaika al ladina laysa lahum fi al akhirati illa al nar. وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, whoever desires the life of this world and its adornments, we will give them, their, uh, we will reward them for whatever good they do, they will get whatever share in this world, and they will not be decreased any of it. And Allah says, they are those who have no share in, in the hereafter, but there is nothing for them in the hereafter except the hellfire. And their actions will be rendered vain. And false is what they used to do. So he says, this also indicates and in it's, in, in it's uh, including or in encompassing the love of status. Because it is the greatest of the adornments of this world and the pleasures of this world. And it is the most, uh, you can say, uh, appealing, the most appealing. And the message of, uh, so this is the thing with Ihya Ulum al Al-Ghazali, uh, rahimullah, he was a great scholar. You know, he, his specialty was fiqh. And also, you know, he was one of those who did a lot of work for the Ulum uh, Aqliya. And later in his life, he had changed his position. But he would report a hadith without actually verifying if these words are accurate and not knowing their sources. As they give the, the Arab 
great proverb, حَاتِبُ You know, somebody in the dark of the night, they're looking for firewood. Sometimes you're not going to get firewood. You might get like, you know, the dung or droppings of the animal. So this is in no disrespect to him, but out of, you know, uh, reverence for the science of hadith, that there are many hadith in there that he will attribute to the Prophet Either the, the wording is different, um, and they are part of the Prophet of some speech, or sometimes they're not hadith at all. Um, but a great scholar, Zainuddin al-Iraqi, rahimahullah, he wrote a kitab, Ikhbarul Ahya bi Akhbaril Ahya. Akhbar al Ahya bi Akhbaril Ahya. No, sorry. Ikhbarul Ahya bi Akhbaril Ahya. That he did the Tahrij of all the Ahadith in Ahya uh, al in So the one he, uh, that he quotes, though, and we're not saying for sure is a hadith, but he says that love of wealth and status, they make hypocrisy grow in the heart like water makes crops grow. So that's um, his words there. And then the last part, that I was going to just mention some ahadith from different uh, chapters in Sahih Muslim. Imam Muslim Rahimullah has a great chapter of Kitab al Imarah, things that deal with leadership. So the first, I won't read all of them or even majority of them, but just selected ones from selected subsections. He mentions that. Even the Prophet وسلم, to show the necessity of leadership um, that even if there are two people يعني, in a society then their Amir over them should still be from Quraysh. So at this point is not to talk about the tribe of who should lead but just to show the essential need of leadership, like only two people imagine, right? How many people are in the community and there should still be leadership for them. I'm trying to find that. So it's the wording of the hadith is hadith from the he said, Imam Muslim, he says, it's hadith number 1820 uh, that hadithan Yunus hadithan Asim ibn Abdullah if it is Ibn Umar or Ibn Sarud, but because of my uh, my lack of knowledge of narrators, usually you can tell, the scholars tell who is the Abdullah mentioned if his second name isn't, based off of who was the narrator from that Abdullah because they used to be from a certain region. So Abdullah ibn Umar was from Medina, Abdullah ibn Sarud was in Kufa, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As was in Egypt. Uh, and uh, I believe um, in Hashem Radiallahu anhu So anyhow the, the wording of the hadith is that This affair of you know, leadership Referring to the Khilafah It should be amongst Quraysh As long as there are two people left so This is just to show the importance of leadership The next is from Bab al-Istikhlaf wa Tarq The chapter of the leader appointing the next leader when his life ends or their decision not to do so. So the narrations he mentioned is a dialogue between Abdullah ibn Umar and his father Umar ibn al-Khattab So it's mentioned uh, from uh, Urwa excuse me from uh, Urwa ibn, Abi Zub ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhuma or, you know, Urwa was from the Tabi'un, but his father was a Tabi'i. Uh, excuse me, his father was a Sahabi. Uh, and he narrates from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Qala hadartu abi hina usiba. He said, I was present with my father when he was inflicted with the, you know, uh, stabbing when he was in Salatul Fajr by Abu Lu'la al-Majusi. May Allah's curse be on him. 
and that was the wound, wound he succumbed to, or the injury he succumbed to, that led to his death. He said, I was with my father, فَأَثْنَوْا عَلَيْهِ وَقَالُوا جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا رَاهِبٌ وَرَاهِبٌ So the people were praising him. They were praising him. So, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, he mentioned, they said, Oh, Umar, will you choose a leader? قَالُوا اسْتَخْلِفْ فَقَالَ أَتَحَمَّلُ أَمْرَكُمْ حَيًّا وَمَيْتًا So, uh, Umar رضي الله عنه, he said that I will take your uh, your decision in life and in death. لو أدت أن حظي من الكفاف لا علي ولا لي. He said I wish I was free from this matter, that I will not receive any, you know, burden, nor will I be given the choice uh, to to make this this decision. And then he said, فإن أستخلف فقد استخلف من هو خير مني. That if I choose the next leader, then the one better than me, meaning Abu Bakr, he was the one who chose the next leader. Abu Bakr chose Umar before Abu Bakr died. And he said, وَإِنْ أَتْرُكُمْ فَقَدْ تَرَكَّكُمْ مَنْ هُوَ خَيْرُ مِنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, and if I leave this world without choosing the next leader, then the one better than me and better than Abu Bakr, Rasulullah Wasallam did not choose the Khalifa. After, you know, before his death, so I said. But there were many ishara and many hadith, the scholars, you know, uh, explain that there were indications that Abu Bakr was the best amongst them. So then Abdullah bin Umar he said, فَعَرَبْتُ أَنَّهُ حِينَ ذَكَرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ غَيْرُهُ مُسْتَخْلِفٌ. So I knew when my father mentioned Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم's example of not picking the leader. Then my father was not going to assign the Khalifa after him. And then there's another narration which is similar to the one before um, that Salim ibn Abdullah ibn Umar, he narrates from his father, Abdullah ibn Umar. He said, I, I entered upon my sister Hafsa and I said, A'alimti anna ab oh, she said, sorry, A'alimta anna abaka ghayru mustakhlifi. He said, do you know your father Umar, he is not going to assign a leader. So Abdullah bin Umar said, there is no way he could do this. Like he would not assign a leader. She said, no, he surely decided not to pick a leader. He said, I swore, uh, so Abdullah bin Umar swore, he said, I will speak with him about this matter and then he said I remained silent until I uh, until he told me until I left and I did not speak with him he said when I was leaving I felt like this was such a burden and an important matter as if I was carrying a mountain in my right so he said, I entered upon my father Umar. So Umar, imagine he's in this condition. He's been stabbed and his wound was so big. Like if he drank milk, like it would flow out of his stomach. Like that's how open it is. But he still cared how is the condition of the Muslims, which is a sign of a leader. He's putting others before himself. He said, He said, I informed him of the, the status of the people. So he said, ثم قلت له إني سمعت الناس يقولون مقالة فأليت أن أقولها لك زعم أنك غير مستقلف وإنه لو كان لك So Abdullah bin Umar he said, I heard from the people some, some news which is important to verify information So I'll, he said, I will, يعني, I, will uh, I swear that I will tell the people, I will tell you about it He said that these people, you know, promise that you said you are not going to pick a leader. وَإِنَّهُ لَوْ كَانَ لَكَ رَاعِي إِبْرٍ أَوْ رَاعِي غَنَمٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكَ وَتَرَكَهَا رَأَيْتَ أَنْ قَدْ ضَيَّعَ He said, if you had, for example, a shepherd that's under your payroll, he's your employee, and he's guarding your camels or your sheep, like, and then he just leaves it, and he doesn't tell you anything, he doesn't, you know, 
or for, uh, look after their well-being. Don't you think this person has now, يعني, he has abandoned and he has neglected his responsibility. But he said, man, you know, leading the people and being their shepherd is much more serious than being the shepherd of camels and, and sheep. So Umar, he agreed to what Ibn Umar said. He said, he, put it, he would put his head down for some time, then he would put it to me, and Allah knows what this means, that he would put it in his lap. But he said, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve his religion. And if I were to choose a leader, then Rasulullah sallallahu or he said, وَإِنِّي لَا إِنْ لَا أَسْتَخْلِفْ فَإِنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لَمْ يَسْتَخْلِفْ if I don't pick the next leader, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't choose. Why in Astaghfir? For in Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه قد استخلف. And if I choose a leader, Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه was the one who chose the leader. So then Abu Umar he said, I swear by Allah, for Allah, ما هو إلا أن ذكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أبا بكر فعلمت أنه لم يكن يعدل برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أحد وأنه غير مستخلف. But he said. When he, my father mentioned Rasulullah Sallallahu and Abu Bakr, I knew that he would never equate anyone with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and that means he would not choose a leader because he, he wanted to do exactly what the Prophet did. And we know the story goes on where he picked the shura of the, the ten companions who were promised Jannah, those who were surviving that were still around. There were seven of them left. Okay, so the next hadith we will mention is the per, uh, the, the uh, negation or the uh, the prohibition of seeking leadership and having greed for it. So there was a, a there is narration from Abdul Hamad ibn Samura. He said, The Messenger of Allah said to me, Ya Abdul Rahman, wa Abdul Rahman, la tas'al al imam. Don't ask for leadership. Fa'innaka in u'atitaha an mas'alatin ukilta ilayha. He said, If you are given it, even though you asked for it, then the Imam Nuri explains that you will not be helped by it. You will not get help, even if you got the leadership when asking for it. وَإِنْ أُعْطِيتَهَا عَنْ غَيْرِ مَسْأَلَةِ وَعِنْتَ عَلَيْهَا But if you are given leadership and you didn't ask for it, then you will get help by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And Imam Nuri, he says, هَكَذَا هُوَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ النُّسْقِ That many, um, many uh, reports uh, have the, the word with Hamza Ukilta and some say Ukilta and he quotes Qadhi Bayar Rahimullah he says that many use the word Ukilta but the correct one is with Wow Ukilta and then you know he explains Uslimta ilayha wa lam yakum ma'aka i'ana if you get leadership and you asked for it then you will not get help which is the opposite he said when you get it without help so if you get it or sorry if you get it without asking if you get it without asking, then you will be helped for it. And then in another report, it comes from the story of uh, Abu Musa al Ash'ari anhu. He says, He said, I entered upon the Prophet, me and two of my cousins, my paternal uncle's sons. My, my uncle's sons. So one of the two, he doesn't remember which of his cousins said, Ya Rasulullah, amirna ala ba'duna wallaka Allahu rasul. That make us leaders act of over what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted you with. Waqala al-akhar min kullu dhalik. And then the second cousin, he said the same thing. Waqala inna wallahi la nuwalli ala hadha al-amri ahadan sa'alah wa la ahadan harasah alayhi. Prophet said, and it's rare to see in the hadith the Prophet swears by Allah because it has reverence. When people take the oath by Allah for some things that are so light and trivial, 
guys, it's just يعني, how a person can have reverence of Allah and they swear, even they're telling the truth, that's good. But to swear by Allah is, is something يعني, the Mu'min, the believer, when he has khashia and fear of Allah, يعني, he uses it very carefully. Imam Shabai he said, I would never swear by Allah whether I was telling the truth or whether I was lying. That was how much he had reverence. So the Prophet swear by Allah to show the importance. He said, we will not give leadership over this to anyone who asks for it or anyone who is greedy over it. And the other example, he says that the dislike of, the chapter dislike of leadership without a necessity, without a necessity. And then this is the story of uh, Abu Dhar That is reported from Abu Dhar, he said, قلت يا رسول الله ألا تستعملون that he said O oh, Messenger of Allah will you not give me leadership or make me use me as a leader قال فضرب بيده على منكبه the Prophet had put his hand and hit Abu Dhar on his shoulder so he said يا أبو Dhar إنك ضعيف he said Abu Dhar you are weak وإنها أمانة and weak in the sense يعني a person if he is a leader if he doesn't have يعني self control to put his interests aside and put the the group first then this weakness is very detrimental for the ruler and the prophet explains in another uh, in another narration which will come. That uh, he told Abu Dhar that it is amana, it is a trust. Leadership is a trust. And on the day of judgment, it is humiliation and it is regret. And I know Allah, he mentions about that. Or excuse me, the hadith continues, the Prophet made an exception. Except the one who fulfills the right of leadership. And he fulfills what is his duty regarding it. So then he, I know he explains that in the other narration that the Prophet told Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, inni araka da'ifa wa inni uhibbu laka ma uhibbu li nafsi. So Abu Dhar, I see you as weak for leadership and I like for you what I like for myself. So this is something, yani, so, yani, Amazing of the Prophet in يعني, wisdom is that he saw وسلم, he knows what it is to be a leader. No one has a responsibility like him. And he says, I want for you what I want for myself. So he's looking for Abu Dhar's best interest. It's not a matter of telling him you're not qualified, you can't do this. Then he told him, وسلم, Don't be the leader of two other people. And don't be the caretaker of the wealth of the orphan. And it's mentioned that the tribe of Abu Dhar of Ifal, they had this bad you know, weakness that they would not be entrusted, they would not take the responsibility uh, and fulfill it correctly with the wealth of orphans. <coughs> so then I know he explains, هذا الحديث أصلنا عظيم في إجتناب الإلهات says this hadith is a, a, a very great foundation and principle for avoiding uh, leadership and this includes even if the person is weak from uh, fulfilling the response or especially if the person is weak in fulfilling responsibilities of leadership as for the humiliation and regret the prophet mentioned in the hereafter he says it is in regards to the one who is not fit for leadership or he is fit for leadership but he doesn't act justly he doesn't do it justly then Allah will humiliate him on the day of judgment and you know, expose him. And he will be regretful as to that which he did wrong. As for the one who is fit for leadership and acts justly, then it is a great virtue for him. You know, the Prophet mentioned the famous hadith, which is also in this chapter, Kitab uh, al and Muslim mentions in other books, many hadith books. That you know the seven who Allah will shade on the shade on the day of judgment, the day there is no shade except his shade. The first category, the best of them, Imam Ali, a leader who is just. 
because that benefit it affects everybody. He is so useful and beneficial to the people. So he said, the hadith, the authentic hadith, have uh, included this, um, and the, he mentions the hadith he just said. And another narration in the Muhsinina ala manabihi minu. Those who deal with equity and justice, they will be on the day of judgment on pulpits of light. So this was what he told Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. And then the Prophet will conclude with the Prophet made the dua in Aisha and Aisha narrated that a man, Abdul Rahman ibn Shumasa, came to Aisha and he asked her about something. So she said, Who are you from? So he said, I am a man from Egypt. So he said, How was your leader um, uh, when he committed the act? of killing her brother uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma I believe it was no not Abdul Rahman ibn Abu Bakr Abdullah ibn Abu Bakr uh, excuse me Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma who was uh, her brother so the man replied that we dislike what the leader had and in, so um, there's other uh, details of the hadith, but I have I, I'm afraid I will not explain it and translate it correctly. Uh, but the crux of the, the matter, or how it relates to the topic at hand, is Aisha anha mentioned that Muhammad so even though what the man did to my brother was wrong he would not stop me from explaining to you what I heard from the Prophet Sallallahu the Messenger of Allah he told me in the same house of mine Allahumma man waliya min amri ummati shay'an fashakka alayhim fashkur O oh Allah, whoever is given leadership over my ummah in any form and is harsh and difficult upon them, O oh Allah, you be harsh and difficult upon that leader. وَمَنْ وَلِيَ مِنْ أَمْرِ أُمَّةِ شَيْءٍ فَرَفَقَ لِيهِمْ فَرَفَقَ And whoever is given leadership from over my ummah in something, uh, in any form, and is gentle and kind with them, then you be gentle and kind. This is the heart of the So anything I have said, first and foremost, I want to practice on the Shaykh Ali Salam and mention to his people. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ إِنْ أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ مَنْ اسْتَقْوَعْتُ وَمَا تَوْفِيْكِ إِلَّا بِلَاهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ إِلَيْهِ He said that I, my people do not want to um, to contradict what I am prohibiting you from. I'm telling you something is wrong. I myself don't want to go against that and do it myself. I just seek the salah, the rectification for myself and you. Must to the best of my ability. And then he taught us, he explained, and Allah put in the Quran for us to learn from and benefit. And my success does not come except from Tawfiq, the ability to do right is only from Allah. On Him do I tr place my trust, and to Him I return with penitence. So we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to yani, preserve this masjid and this community and the Muslimin. And that yani, the person, even look at the Sahaba, yani, this is one thing I wanted to say. Uh, my niya is not to tell the person even herself, but as our brothers, we wish khair for each other. Even the Sahaba, for example, Hassan ibn Ali, yani he stepped down from the Khilaf because he wanted the interests of the Ummah at large, so Mu'awi would remain. Even though the, they knew he was more fit than the job, but he stepped down after six months. And so that, so that the Ummah stays united. Abdullah ibn Zubayr was a 
us are we more fit for leadership than the son of Mu'awil al -Mu And although he was one of the parts of his death, Allah, he was killed in the Haram of the Hajjaj bin Shazwan. But these Sahaba, Allah, they were more fit. But when we look at Musalihan, when we look at the general welfare and interests of the community, is it really worth it to go through so many masajid? How many masajid? Yani, there was so much work to open that masjid across the country. And so much resources were spent, so much time was spent, money was spent. People put their hard work into it. And because of this issue, the love of power, and the person wasn't fearing Allah, and they didn't look at the, the danger of leadership, they didn't work on their own level of knowledge and piety and practice. This killed their own yani, akhirah. Like this, uh, we don't know the end, but they are in. They are waiting if Allah takes their hisab for something very serious. So many messages that instead of looking at the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah He said, if you have a disagreement, that if you differ in anything, return it to the Quran and the Sunnah. If you believe in Allah and the, uh, the Day of Judgment, that is a better uh, for that is a better reason and a better result. So, so this issue, yeah, is many places, many masajid. Now people don't even attend anymore because the project that was going to be built, it was spent on legal fees and going to court and asking non-Muslims. To judge over us, we in the house of Allah, we can't even do the, the thing Allah wants us to do. And we have to go to the non Muslim courts. I'm not saying don't obey the law for that, but our deen gave us yani, complete guidance for every aspect. So those Sahaba, they, they, they looked at the interest, and they themselves didn't even try to take the leadership when they deserved. Hussain, we know how the ending happened. Even in, in that issue of Karba, he wasn't going to Iraq to cause a revolt. He was trying to go to the people that the narrations mentioned to calm them down so that they don't do khuruja al to revolt against the leader. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us whatever we said of goodness. Whatever said was good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Whatever was said of wrong is from me and Shaitan who comes with the perfect time. Inshallah, for next week we'll start the book on uh, the principles of uh, Quranic science and tafsir. Exactly. Okay. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.